you know, the speech in Cairo, I, I um, it's funny, I find in general on Obama's foreign policy, you find conservatives taking one of two lines. Uh, uh, and, and sometimes they seem to move back and forth between them pretty quickly, although sometimes maybe one could, you know, uh, one is that kind of, um, you know, Obama is, this, is, the, is the next coming of Jimmy Carter, and he's going to basically uh, lead us down the path to appeasement and new terrorist attacks. The other is basically, he's doing everything that Bush is doing, um, uh, but uh, nobody was willing to admit it because there's so much pro-Obama bias in the media. Um, and I, the, the coverage that I've seen of the speeches tended to fall, form, fall mostly in the latter category amongst conservatives, i.e., there's nothing, remar nothing to, to be said, nothing remarkable for the speech. Obama shouldn't get any credit for it because Obama, uh, Bush, ha has said various, basically the same things and would have said the same things. Um, and I actually really just don't think that's true. Um, I, I think that there was, um, and the conservatives want to, I think conservatives are better, better off start, uh, being a, the first line of attack, act, arguing that Obama is a significant break and saying why they don't like that. I think, because I think he's a significant break, I think a terrific break, but I think a really big break. And, the, what I think was really different about this speech from the speeches that Bush gave was that it was premised on the idea of mutual reciprocity between Israel and the Arabs and the Palestinians and between America. So uh, if that was really not something you found in Bush's speeches much at all. So he talked about, he, he, you know, he talked about democracy. You can't say he denied, he, he ignored it. He actually talked about it at quite great length. Um, but he also talked about America's responsibility to cause Guantanamo. He talked about the Iranian nuclear program. But he talked about our vision of getting to a world where we reduce our nuclear arsenals. He talked about the Palestinian obligations, but he talked about Israel's obligations um, to stop settlement growth. And he talked about the Cold War in just a completely different way than Bush does. You know, Bush did. You know, for Bush, the, the Cold War was this virtuous, noble struggle where we were always on the side of the angels, but because we were so busy doing good in other places, we forgot to democratize the Middle East. Um, which is just, it, it's just, just a, 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 a laughable story of the Cold War. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and um, there was a lot of good we did in the Cold War, and a lot of bad we did in the Cold War, and a lot of the bad was particularly in the Middle East, and it wasn't just because we were looking the other way. It was for very conscious reasons, um, because we weren't, because we had agendas that were more important than democracy to us, uh, I think wrongly often. And so Obama talked about the Cold War in the Middle East, I think in the way that most Middle Easterners understand it. Um, and again, uh, in a way that suggested... I read the speech and I watched it in the studio at Fox. I don't. I, I'm trying to remember he, what he said. He said. He said. He said that basically in the Cold War in the Middle East, basically America basically, uh, y y you know, followed its own agendas with little interest. I, I'm paraphrasing that, but basically little interest, little little focus on the the interests and 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 needs of of, of the countries of the Middle East themselves. Uh, and I think there was a lot of truth to that. I mean, you know, goodness knows if you look at the way America basically just tried to perpetuate the Iran Iraq War and all the suffering sure. that created. So, um, and I think that was a those were really significant differences. What he said about what the Arabs have to do may not be that different, and what the Iranians have to do, but what he said about what Israel and the Americans have to do, I think, was very different. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure you're right about, uh, first of all, I mean, he started with conservative reaction to the, the speech, and I'm always delighted when you consider the conservative reaction to everything, the gold standard by which we should begin these conversations, but, uh, <laughs> no, I, just, um, I think it's maybe some way, you know, maybe throwing chum in the water somehow for you. <laughs> um, uh, it's from what I can tell, and I had a sort of crazy busy day yesterday, you know, uh, um, and I've sort of been in and out of all of this, um, uh, conservatives are split. I mean, they're really split about the speech. You had uh, Max Boot, uh, Rich Lowry from National Review, our editorial from uh -huh. National Review, um, all basically saying it was a pretty good speech. Uh -huh. um, and you have guys like my buddy Andy McCarthy and and s some others of the sort of, I mean, I, a lot of these guys, you know, I, I was about to say of the more hawkish national security crowd, but I'm not sure that Rich isn't part of the more hawkish national uh -huh. security crowd, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, who were appalled by the speech. Uh -huh. And um, I'm David sort of... Frum, in, I think, was appalled by the speech. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? I think David Frum was appalled by the speech, if I noticed somewhere. Um... But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah so why did that fall? Well, I mean, it, it varies. I think that there was a... Uh, I mean, look, my own take on the speech, I wrote a column about it, was just that this was sort of vintage Obama. Uh -huh. um, and the thing is, is that vintage Obama can really bother me uh -huh. in a lot of circumstances. But this is uh -huh. one of those circumstances where it actually called for vintage Obama. Uh -huh. um, you know, one of his 
traits that really drives him crazy is how everything is through the prism of him. Uh-huh. That he is, um, you know, there's a lot of me, myself, and I in his speeches. You know, when he gave his speech on Gitmo at the National Archives last week, it was all predicated on his intense personal, quote, American journey with America's founding documents and how much he cares for them and how important they are to him and the role that his mother and his father played in all of this and blah, 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 blah. It's all wonderful stuff, good for a nice, um, uh, you know, Constitution Day speech, but it really was sort of irrelevant um, and not authoritative on what we should do about Gitmo one way or the other. And likewise, um, uh, you know, there were a lot of conservatives who were making a big deal about Obama's hypocrisy on, uh, you know, now touting his Muslim ties and his Muslim, you know, connections and all of the rest um, when he downplayed them so much during the campaign. And for me, that's, you know, it's, I, I want him to do that. I mean, that to me seems to strike me as, is, it's, yes, it's hypocritical, but, you know, so what? Nixon was a hypocrite to a certain extent for... Um, putting his anti-communism aside and reaching out to China, um, and that was a smart play. You know, if if he can win goodwill and reduce anti-Americanism in the Middle East by touting his middle name and all of that, and his his Muslim father and all of that, even if it contradicts what he was putting out before, eh, so be it. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, but uh, I think that there are a lot of people who think he was really whitewashing Islam. I think there are a lot of people who think that... What, 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 what does that mean? Oh, I mean, the... Um, these... The sort of... You know, the... the I mean, take whitewash back. I mean, there are people who think he's whitewashing Islam, but I don't want to get into the weeds of all that. I think my problem, um, rather than me characterize what other people think, they can do that themselves. My problem with his treatment of Islam is that... Um, he was he was treating the Muslim world as this monolithic thing, and um, you know the whole point that I mean I think someone in foreign policy was making this point recently. Uh, you know the whole point is is that that's basically a jihadi position that there is a monolithic ummah, a monolithic single Muslim world community, um, and that they have like interests and like aspirations and all of the rest. When in reality. Um, the Muslim world is remarkably diverse, and, um, and in many ways it's not in our interest to be talking about the Muslim world as if it is a singular block. And I think that that is sort of problematic. I also think